Dungeons and Dragons is a game. It's also a cartoon, a series of movies, comic books, stories, you name it. But for some reason it's never really caught on, and I'm going to pitch a way to revive it. And welcome back to the heart of the stories we tell. I'm Rob the Host, and this is another look deep into what makes a story a story. A theory on storytelling by a storyteller who believes that every story has merit. And tonight's episode is... A new D&D cartoon. I'm going to pitch it as if it were Netflix. Now, as some of you may know, every once in a while I take a moment out from doing the theory in order to actually pitch an idea of my own. And of course, I always ask the question, what's the difference between fanfic and working with an established consent? The paycheck. So anyone that's been on this channel in the length of time knows I roleplay. They probably also know that I push something called Ares Gaming Studio, especially if you saw my thing about the miniatures. I'm working with them to write a module as we speak for D&D, because it's something close to my heart. I've been playing it for almost 20 years now, but I don't think the IP has exactly been perfectly used. I mean, yes, we've had different incarnations, and I'm going to talk about each of them briefly, but there's a lot of rich information there that we could mine for IP, and make what I think would work best as a Netflix series. For those of you that don't know, what I do here is I take apart stories, try to figure out how they work, why they work, and what we like about them. Basically get to the heart of the stories we tell. If this is your first time here and that sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button. Every once in a while, though, I take a little break from that in order to pitch my own ideas. Those pitches are at least somewhat loosely based on the lessons I've learned as I've explored the different ways we do and don't tell stories. In this case, since Dungeons & Dragons has had so many bad movies, I think a Netflix series would be better. And my first thought was how the Orville is doing so well with just relationships and how people work. But then I started to think about what works on Netflix. And since I just watched Strange Things Season 2, it really occurred to me while I was reviewing that, that the interpersonal relationships, the way that the kids reacted like they were real kids, could really be used. Of course, then we have the problem. Why would Netflix want some silly sci-fi fantasy cartoon? Well, here's what you do. You take the base idea of the original cartoon. You take Dungeon Master. You take the video game ideas and all of that. And you apply them the same way Strange Days did. You have real kids. You have child actors playing real people that are playing a game. And you do it as the game so half the story is taking place in real life with high school drama, and half of it's taking place in the supernatural world. Now, one of the biggest problems I have with the way D&D is portrayed in the popular fantasies and popular TV shows is the idea that there aren't women players. Let me just stop for a minute and say, as a person who runs a D&D game, there have been points in time where half my players were women. So one of the first things I would do is I would make it five players and a DM, plus a bunch of supporting cast members from the school and the parents. But of those six people, at least two of them would be women, girls, who play the game. Why? Because we want to destroy stereotypes. And I know people who are sports fans, people who played sports and D&D. &D. There's no reason these need to just be geeks. Realistically, we can just make regular everyday people who then have these avatars... And you know what? In the modern world, we already have stories like that. Look at the new Jumanji movie. It's the same thing with a video game. But instead of doing it as a video game, we put them into a fantasy role-playing game. And we have actors and directors that play these games, for God's sake. And that's the first thing you need to do, really. You need to get people who are passionate about it. We have plenty of source material. We could make it a true fantasy. We can make it... Uh, uh, cyberpunk pa fantasy, we could make it interchangeable. We could even have each season be a different campaign so that we can showcase different campaign settings. There's plenty of stories we can draw from that they can reference that would be like little tiny commercials inside the show for books that they can go out and get. And all you need to do is have believable characters and you have two sets. You have the main characters that are regular on TV, and these are, like I said, mostly child actors because they're going to be going to high school, and then they deal with their problems by coming to the escapism of the D&D &D world, 
And in the D&D world, you have them be animated. You have the child actors do the voiceovers of their characters, but then you have other people, especially bringing guest stars, to do voiceovers for other characters, the NPCs they meet, the story they play. And you can even do this in such a way that you have interesting, strange story connections. Hey, maybe if they're dealing with a bully in school, and they're dealing with some sort of villain in the game world, that can help them learn lessons on how to deal with people in the real world. You know, kind of like why we tell stories to begin with. And I don't know why Netflix wouldn't jump at this idea. And it would be a great way to re-encapsulate what was a good concept with their cartoon. Instead of making another horrible movie, make a season of 13, 14 episodes, each about 40 minutes long, throw them up on Netflix, and see how many people watch it. I bet you if you could get some good writers, you could manage to pull off an excellent story. And here's my quick, just down and dirty idea of how I would do it. Our six main characters would be three of them sophomores in high school, one of them, one of their younger siblings, a freshman in high school, and one of them be a junior or senior in high school. I would have them dealing with normal problems, going to parties, all of that. But every Thursday night, or every Friday night, or whatever, maybe every Saturday night, they get together and they play Dungeons & Dragons. And one of them is always the GM, and five of them are always the player. And they argue, and we get nice little pop culture references and jokes, because, well, that's what happens and people play the game anyway. And we even get people doing silly stuff like, oh dude, you totally just stole that from Lord of the Rings. And we create realistic characters. They aren't all nerds. There are people who like sports, people who don't like sports, people who get on each other's nerves, people who play video games, people who complain that the other people play video games too much. And every part of the game has an action moment. So since we're doing it animated, there is no budgetary constraints on that other than how fast someone can draw. And inside that story, we have a heroic quest, and we start caring about the characters both in that story and the fact that, it, since it is just a game, it's not that harmful when they die or when bad stuff happens to them, which allows this to be a little more kid-friendly than, say, Stranger Things or 13 Rules or any of those things. But that's my idea. What would you think about a hybrid live-action animated series using some of the reference points of Dungeons and Dragons, along with a modern take on how kids deal? Or would you rather forego the story point of there being players and do something more like Order of the Stick, or more like what the three Dungeons and Dragons movies tried to do? Let me know in the comment section below. Since this month is NaNoWriMo, I'm going to be doing slightly shorter videos because I'm working on a story. In the meantime, if you liked this and I hope you did, hit that thumbs up and share the video. If this is your first time here, subscribe. I try to dissect stories normally. I try not to go too much into making up my own idea of what to do. But when I do every once in a while, it's based on how I dissected those stories, why we enjoyed them, how we enjoyed them, and what we do with them. So, I hope you come on back, and I hope you enjoyed my take on the heart of my own story idea.